everyone, welcome back to another Smart Chats. Today I have the pleasure of being joined by Abby, who is an amazing chemist, and we're going to be chatting all about natural beauty, specifically skincare. So I asked you guys to send in any questions that you may have, and we got so, so many, so thank you for that, and we will be going through as many of those as possible. So thank you, Abby, for being here today. <laughs> so first of all, I'd like to know just basically what it is that you do. I know that you are a product product development chemist, mm -hmm. right? So yes. what exactly is that? Um, so basically, um, my job role is to design um, cosmetic products from a from a brief. So a customer come come to me, they'll be like, I want this product. Um, can you give, give me some advice on what on what should go in it? Mm -hmm. And then I'll go to the lab and formulate it, and then submit it, and then get feedback and keep going until we have the perfect product. Amazing. Okay. I think before we like start talking specifically about natural beauty, all of the kind of technicalities of it, I'd like to know exactly what is natural beauty because it seems like there are a lot of blurred lines between natural beauty and I suppose more like standard beauty. Mm -hmm. So are there any regulations at all? Um, so with natural beauty, it tends to just be um, a product that contains natural natural ingredients mm. um, or you could have um, a product that is 100% natural um, it completely varies really you've got you've got loads of different loads of different sides to it okay. so there are some um, certifications that focus more towards your your natural products so you've got cosmos EcoCert, um, mm. and that is basically where you pay a third party to certify that your product is what you say it is right um, but the but the, um, the products that aren't necessarily certified, it doesn't mean that they're lying, it just means that they they don't need someone else to certify the product is natural. I see, and can you look for the Cosmos on yes. the products? Yeah, yeah, you can, it'll be on, it'll be on the packaging somewhere okay, on there. Okay, great. Because I have heard that a lot of um, brands can just make that statement of saying natural or organic, mm -hmm. and it, there actually isn't much organic ingredients or natural ingredients in there. Yeah, so when you've got an organic product, so normally in the title of the actual product, so say you've got, um, I don't know, a moisturiser, if someone says organic moisturiser and that is the name of the product, then that means that your whole entire product is 100% organic, mm -hmm. but you can't, it's not necessarily true. So, so if you've got a moisturiser, that means you've got water content, water's not organic. I remember you saying this yeah. last time. That really baffled me because you would just think water is water, like it's organic. I don't know, yeah. but it, it kind of makes sense because how can you certify it? Yeah, exactly. And it's because it's been it's been treated. It's gone through processes, so yeah. it's, so it's not complete. It's not organic. Right. Even yeah. though it's natural, it's not organic. Yeah. So water so. is still processed. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> So are there any main ingredients, main culprits that you think we should look out for to avoid on our skin? No, there are no ingredients to look out for. Every single cosmetic product goes through a safety assessment at the end of formulation. So once you've got your, your approved product, you do a safety assessment and that is where someone puts pen to paper to, to make sure that all of the ingredients are safe for use. No ingredients are over-regulated quantity, so every single ingredient is regulated and they and they are that body to say that your product is safe for use. So every single cosmetic product that is on the market is 100% safe for cosmetic use. Interesting, that's really good to know actually. From your professional standpoint, would you say that natural beauty is more effective on the skin? Um, no, I wouldn't say it's more, more effective. I wouldn't say it's less effective. Um, natural beauty, it's all about an ethical choice. Mm -hmm. So if you want to go for the natural beauty for the renewable sourced materials, then mm -hmm. go for natural. But if you don't necessarily mind about the renewable sources um, and you might want a few ingredients that do have some solid data behind them, like some well-known ingredients like Matrixel 3000, that's in a few, a few, in a few products. Right. But that's just because it's been spoken about a lot. Right. That's... The, there's certain components in that raw material that aren't natural. Right. Um, and what is the benefit of that ingredient? Um, so that is specifically a peptide for anti-aging. Um, right. But there are some other natural natural actives yeah. that are completely natural and give you really good really good results. Yeah. So it just it depends what route you want to go down for yeah. 
development. Yeah, I think with natural beauty, a lot of people, myself included, feel more confident and comfortable using that on our skin, especially when you're more conscious of your health and well-being in general. Mm -hmm. So if you're kind of eating as yeah. healthy as possible, you're exercising and health and well-being means a lot to you, it kind of does make sense to then be conscious of the products that you're using as well. Yeah. Because that was kind of a light bulb moment for me when I was using um, skincare and body products that do have a lot of chemicals in them. But at the same time, I was really conscious of making sure I'm eating as healthy mm -hmm. as I can and you know yeah. exercising. And I just thought those chemicals are absorbed straight into our bloodstream. And you say that they are totally mm -hmm. safe. There's yeah. actually not much to worry about. Yeah. But for me, I just, I feel a lot better using as natural as possible. Yeah. And it's good to know actually that if you find a product that is say 80% natural or 90% natural, mm -hmm. the other 10% isn't actually going to be damaging anyway. Yeah, completely, it's still gonna be 100% right. safe for you to use. That's good to know. Yeah. So one thing I've noticed that lots of people have been asking is about the price of natural products because Obviously, when you go into a beauty store and you find some natural skincare, mm -hmm. it ticks all of the boxes that we've been speaking about, you yeah. know, whether it's um, natural ingredients or organic. But then you look at the price and it can be like £85 yeah. for a moisturiser. Mm -hmm. And that obviously isn't accessible to most people. So mm -hmm. why are those products more expensive? Um, so it's basically because when you've got a natural product, it's been farmed. So it's been grown from a seed all the way to a plant. It's been looked after, it's been watered, fed, and then you've got the extraction, pro the extraction process mm. to, to actually get the chemicals out. Right. Um, so it's been processed. So all of that adds cost to it. Um, whereas your synthetic products, you've got them there, um, there readily, and your petrochemicals, um, they're already being processed. So and you don't have to you don't have to grow it. Yeah. You don't have to use water to. I see. It's, it's, yeah. It's there. It's it's already a process. It's being happening. Whereas this is being done specially. Yeah. Um, and also with your with your actives, um, it depends what actives are in the product as well. If they're mm -hmm. in there at active levels, that's going to increase price. Right. So that so that all adds up. Do you think there will ever be a point within this beauty industry where natural and organic skincare will be more accessible? Um, I think yes, but at the same time, um, it's, it's about people's individual ethical choices and yeah. it, it depends on if people are asking for it. I think if more people ask for it, then there'll be more of it. Yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. Makes sense. So we all know the importance of wearing SPF mm -hmm. every day. It's yeah. really important to protect our skin from the UV mm -hmm. rays and also helps in you know, anti-aging or just preventing early aging. Mm -hmm. Are there any natural SPFs out there? Because I've really struggled to find this. I've tried to do my research, done a bit of Googling, and I just can't find natural SPF. So the only natural SPF ingredients out there are your zinc oxide and your titanium dioxide. Right, um, So okay. they are the only things that will give you a natural SPF rating. Uh -huh. But they're white powders, so they will give you the white I oh, so the white. they don't like absorb. Yeah, they'll be and... more oily, so they're, for aesthetic, if you want a nice feeling SPF, then mm -hmm. it, you're gonna have to go synthetic because there there aren't really any natural ones right. out there that are nice. It's, it's possible, but yeah. it takes a lot of work. Okay. Um, and you won't get your broad spectrum just from those two ingredients. So you, yeah. so you won't get a broad spectrum, you'll get like a good sunburn effect or you'll get, get a good protection effect. Yeah. You won't get the broad spectrum. I do find with SPF, you have to kind of compromise because for me, any SPF that I've used, it's not good for my skin, it kind of clogs up my pores because mm -hmm. it's not the kind of formulas that I'm used to wearing, but obviously yeah. you've got to wear them to mm -hmm. protect your skin from the sun, especially in the summer months. So yeah. it's like finding that balance. Like, do you think the positives of wearing SPF outweigh the negatives? 100%, yeah, yeah definitely. And the, the occlusive feeling that you get, that's because the SPF, it's got to be this oil that covers your skin evenly. Right. So that you are evenly covered and protected. Yeah. So that's where you get that feeling. But okay. yeah, 100% outweighs. Yeah, just got to do it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you get a couple of spots, it doesn't matter. Yeah. At least you're protecting <laughs> your skin. And what are your thoughts on pollution barriers? Because I've seen this a lot mm -hmm. um, with different brands that are bringing them out. I don't know if it's kind of a trend at the moment, but there are kind of blue lights, mm -hmm. uh, barriers, um, general pollution, if you're living in a city that protects your skin from it. Mm -hmm. Do they work? Are they worthwhile? 
Um, yeah, they do work there. So they're, they're again, they're raw materials that have data behind them and you put them in your product and then they, they provide the data. Wow. Um, and they, they do work. So with um, your pollution um, protection, mm -hmm. so pollution is particulate matter. Right. So you want to have a layer there to stop it from touching, not touching your skin, but yeah. adhering to your skin, affecting your skin. So the side effects from all of it is going to be aging. That's that's how your face negatively reacts to these things. Right. So yeah. it ages, um, or it becomes dehydrated. Yeah. But then again, that look, that makes you look older. Yeah. Um. So basically, most of the um, raw materials they protect your skin against mm. the aging that is triggered from these from these things. Yeah. Um, blue light, that's again another thing that can really affect your circadian rhythm, rhythm as well. Oh, really? Especially, say, yeah. you're, say you're in bed at night, lights are off, you're ready to go to sleep, but you've got this light in your face. Yeah. And your your body's going to be thinking it's daytime, even though your brain yeah. knows it's nighttime. I was so guilty of that last night. I was yeah. on my phone and I can go to sleep, <laughs> and I know I shouldn't do it. <laughs> but that's really good to know, actually, yeah. about those pollution barriers that they do work. There is yeah. data behind them because I love the bare minerals mm -hmm. complexion rescue defense, yes. and that protects against pollution and blue light. Mm -hmm. And the thing with with those is you you don't see noticeable differences because it's it's protecting you from something. So yeah. it's not like this is going to make your skin softer or more yeah. glowy. Like it's you, a you long term know. effect. Yeah, it's not a definitely. short term. Yeah. But as as an actual product, as a moisturizer anyway, I really like wearing mm -hmm. it. So that's really good to know that it is protecting yeah. my skin at the same time. Yeah. I'd love to hear your thoughts on scrubs and exfoliators mm -hmm. so you obviously have the abrasive scrubs that are more like manual yeah. exfoliators and then the non-abrasive um, exfoliators mm -hmm. that are more liquids yeah which one would you recommend um it depends what you're going for really so if you if you have dry patches then i would personally normally go for the more manual one because or like a muslin cloth Right, because then yeah. you can actually get in there and exfoliate those skin particles away. Yeah. And um, if you want the more brightening and you want your skin to always be refreshed, mm -hmm. then I would I would probably go for more the chemical the the more the more chemical the chemical scrub. So like glycolic acid. Yeah. That's really good because um it encourages desquamation, which is where basically your dead skin cells on the surface on the surface are shedded so it encourages um a chemical reaction between your skin and your dead skin cells to release them i really yeah wow. so it's like so you're not you're not manually hurting your skin yeah. it's just very gently just like removing them interesting because yeah. i do actually use both um mm -hmm. but for the more manual exfoliators yeah. i like a very very fine yes. grain um yeah. and seed to skin actually have a lovely one i don't know if you know that brand it's, it's like a very small brand from tuscany and they've uh, they use um mint tiny crystals like almost like oh, sand yeah and it doesn't like hurt you know sometimes when yeah. you've got big kind of salt crystals in there it can kind of yeah hurt and, it, and it doesn't even feel like it's really yeah doing yeah, yeah definitely whereas this one's nice and also for the um i don't know if you've got any recommendations but for the uh non-abrasive exfoliator i love mm. ren they've I've got, not tried they, the they've got one, no. really nice one. it's like an orange liquid it's lovely yeah do you have any actual like recommendations? I don't or? really use any exfoliators to don't be honest. Yeah. No, um, but I would if I do go for one. It's always a always a glycolic acid. Glycolic base. acid. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think the ordinary do you one. Yes, they, they yeah. do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and the Pixie Glow one as well. Oh, Pixie Glow's one. good. Yeah, mm -hmm. Ren is actually very similar to Pixie yes. Glow. Yeah. So, what exactly is glycolic acid? This is something that I have been seeing a lot in various skincare mm -hmm. products. So, yeah. I'd love to know more about that. So, glycolic acid, it's an AHA. So, it's an alpha hydroxy acid, um, which is basically used for exfoliation, chemical exfoliation. Um, and it's just very, it just very gently removes, removes dead skin cells mm -hmm. um, it's not harmful to the skin or anything. Um, and it's, so you've got your AHAs, um, so you've got your glycolic, your lactic, but the glycolic one, that's, that's the most gentle and right. the most effective. Okay. Um, and then you've got your BHA, but there's just one BHA, which is salicylic acid, mm -hmm. um, which is good for acne prone skin. Great. And if you've got sensitive skin, can you use glycolic acid? Um, I would say so, yes, but I would minim minimise the use, so maybe just right. use it once a week, whereas whereas if you don't have sensitive skin, you could use it up to three, four times a week, but if you've got sensitive right. skin, maybe just start and see how you yeah. see how you get on with it. Great. And uh, speaking of specific ingredients, what do you think about retinol? Retinol is a tricky one, so there's lots of different derivatives of retinol, so mm -hmm. in products, so you've got your retinol, you've got retinol palmitate, um, and then you've got your hydroxy pinkalone retinoate. 
Wow. So there's yeah. different, loads of different types yeah. of retinol, so basically. Yeah, so there's loads of different ones. Um, and basically, they're, they're all metabolites. So, um, so they on your skin, they all metab metabolise and they end up being retinoic acid. So that's mm. the thing that helps acne, helps wrinkles. Right. Um, so that's what actually does the work. Yeah. And retinol um, is it's a bit of a tricky one. It's... Um, it's got loads of side effects, so it can dry your skin out. Yeah. Um, I've, I've had it happen to me. It reacted really badly with my skin. I've had the same as well. And I didn't even need to use it. I was yeah. just, I wanted to try it. I was like, oh, yeah, it's a nice Yeah, exactly retinol. the same. Um, it was from Drunk Elephant. So oh. again, like quite a natural yeah. brand. And I love what they're doing. I think they yeah. are great. Um, but I just didn't need to use the retinol. Mm -hmm. And my skin started peeling like yeah. two, three days later. And I actually had a photo shoot at the time. Oh, no. <laughs> and I was like, oh God, this is so embarrassing. <laughs> It's like my skin isn't normally like this. <laughs> yeah, so it can be really tricky. And also with retinol, the you can only use it at night time because of the negative effects it can it can have on your skin. Right. Okay. Um, and you need to wear SPF the next day after yeah, as well. That's um, really important. But the good thing about the the last reti retinol um, derivative that I spoke mm -hmm. about, um, which was the hydroxypincolone retinoate, mm -hmm. um, the way that that metabolizes compared to your so your retinol palmitate when that breaks down, mm -hmm. you end, it goes to retinol, and then along the line it gets down to your retinoic acid. But right. your um, hydroxypinglone retinoate, mm -hmm. um, that, the way that that breaks down is that your, the, retin, the retinol, it's not retinol, but the retinoate, when that breaks, it skips the retinol, so it goes straight down to your retinoic oh, acid. I see. So, you, so if you're using that one, you skip out any of the negative effects. Oh, really? So we should be looking out for... Yeah. Which one? Hydroxypinclone. Okay. <laughs> retinoate. I need to look out for that one. Okay. <laughs> that sounds good. Um, is there any particular age that you should start using retinol or, or an age that you shouldn't be using it below? Any... So... So for the wrinkle side of things, you probably want to look at starting in your 30s. So when you're young, you want to look at protection, mm -hmm. hydration, moisturizing, um, and then as and then the same into your 20s, maybe a bit more protection. Mm -hmm. When you get to your 30s, that's when you want to look at the anti-aging, mm -hmm. and you want to increase your anti-aging claims as as you as you grow older. Yeah. Um, but you still want to remain maintain the hydration, the protection as you go through because okay. that helps prevent aging. Um, so ret retinol probably, probably in your thirties for the anti wrinkle mm -hmm. um, benefits. So I've been um, selfish asking all of my own questions up until now. It's been so interesting, but now it's time to answer your questions that you've sent in. They were so interesting. Um, the first one is about SLS. Mm -hmm. So Marquetta has asked: Is SLS in cosmetics and also in toothpaste really that bad? Short answer: No. It's not bad at all. So um, earlier we spoke about Cosmos um, mm -hmm. certification. SLS is actually Cosmos approved. It comes from really? coconuts. Really? Mm -hmm. or, so SLS comes from coconut always, every yeah. time. Wow, yeah. okay. Or it, I think palm as well, but coconut mainly, yeah. Right. Yeah. Could you um, say roughly like what has been said negatively about SLS? Um, so people have been saying, one thing I heard was that um, it comes from silicones, which is not true. Really? Yeah, that's one crazy thing that I've heard. Um, and loads of people have been saying that it like completely dries out your skin, and it's just mm -hmm. bad. It's just it's just bad for your skin. Right. Um, which is not true. Um, if you, it's mostly used. It's it's used in rinse off products. Mm -hmm. um, you can use it in baby cream actually, um, because wow. you can use it as an emulsifier because it's a surfactant. Mm -hmm. So it's the thing that combines like your oil and your water. Yeah. So it's mainly used in, in cleansers, so like shampoo, body wash, mm -hmm. face wash. Um, so it's all it's always rinse off. So it's right. it's not it's not bad for your skin. Yeah. Um, at all, and it's plus and it's natural. It's um, so funny how rumors can go around. You must just laugh when you see th like yeah. claims like that saying mm -hmm. it's made from silicon, and you just yeah. know it's absolutely not. Yeah, it's completely natural. <laughs> not true. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Um, it can it can also be used in toothpaste because it's not ethoxylated right. um, and it doesn't taste of anything and it foams. So that's what gives you the foaminess oh, in your okay. cleansers. Um, so yeah, so it can be used in that. Um, so the other one is um, SLES, and that is an ethoxylated version of SLS. Mm -hmm. um, so the majority of it is is natural, mm -hmm. um, but because of the ethoxylated chain, it means that the chain is longer because you've got your um, your ethoxylated 
um, molecules in between your right. carbons. Yeah. So it makes the chain longer, so it's less irrit irritated. Oh, I so your see. skin will be less irritated by using okay. it. So when people say SL SLS free mm -hmm. and SLES free, really. SLES is actually even better, even though it's not completely natural. Really? Wow, okay. Yeah. So interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Jasmine has asked about fragrance and scents. I'd love a perfume that isn't damaging to our health or the planet. Okay, so this is a really tricky one. So with your fragrances, so there are two different kind of fragrances. So you've got your natural fragrances, and mm -hmm. um, so obviously they don't harm they don't, they don't harm like um, anything because they're not coming from synthetic right. sources, they're coming from plants. Yeah. So it's just cold processed plants mm -hmm. um, to get the essential oils out. Yeah, it's the essential so it's oils. Essential oils. Like, yeah. so, so that is what um, natural fragrances are, they're essential right. oils. Um, the one thing with that is that some of them do have allergens in them. Um, yeah. But allergens don't affect everyone. It's, it's if you've got an allergy to it, then, then avoid it, but right. otherwise, it's, and they're in there at tiny, tiny quantities, mm -hmm. so it's nothing really to worry about. Okay. Um, the other um, fragrance that you've got is synthetic. That still has allergens in it, um, um, but it doesn't come from essential oils, but you've got more of a choice with a synthetic fragrance to not have as many allergens, I see. but yeah. it's synthetic. So again, it's, you've, got, you've still got allergens, but what's, mm -hmm. what's your ethical choice? Yeah. Um, the other thing about it being okay for the environment um, is all fragrances, when they come to me as a finished fragrance, I get an IFRA statement. Now the IFRA statement has the maximum percentage that I can use the fragrance in for specific skincare and cosmetics. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, wow. So I can only use it at a certain percentage yeah. so that it remains okay for the environment right. and for you. Oh, that's so really it's, good So fragrances yeah. are regulated. And are um, natural fragrances Cosmos approved as well? Yes. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they Great. are. Yeah, so even if you see the parfum, yeah. that's, that doesn't mean it's synthetic. It's just meaning that there's been a fragrance that's been made as a fragrance added, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean that it's synthetic. Okay. Is it useful to use homemade natural ingredients or to buy natural products? This one really made me laugh <laughs> because when I was younger, my friend Hattie and I used to go home after school and mash avocados and put them on our face and leave them on for about an hour as a face mask. Oh. But every time we'd be like bright red, I don't oh know no. why we did it. Like, <laughs> I, would, I would not recommend avocados on your face. <laughs> Stick to Sunday brunch instead. Oh my gosh. So what are your thoughts on homemade? made natural products um i would say that they they're not they're not good because all cosmetic products they're regulated um so specific ingredients they're regulated you can't put them in at a certain percentage over a certain percentage whereas at home if you're not qualified you're not in the industry you don't know that you're just gonna mix anything together so um so lavender oil for for instance that is natural so you're like oh i'm gonna smother myself in it it's natural yeah. it's fine for me um, but actually, I can only use it at a certain percentage. If I go over that percentage, then when it goes to the safety assessor, it will be rejected and that cosmetic product can't be launched. Really? Yeah, whereas at home, you could potentially be putting it all over your body at 100% your yeah. and it could you could have harmful results from it. Wow. So I advise buy your products from the shop because they're regulated, they're tested, they're safe. Yeah. Vivi has asked, I heard many different opinions on uh, coconut oil. Does it clog pores or is it okay? Um, so you've got one thing called a comedogenic rating. Um, so the higher the rating, the more likely it is to clog your pores and the lower the rating, obviously, the less likely it is to clog okay. your pores. Um, so it goes from zero to five. Mm -hmm. Coconut oil has a rating of four. So, it, but then it, it, it differs from person to person. If, if you're prone to having clogged pores, then stay well clear from really? coconut oil. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but if, if you're someone who you've, you use coconut oil and it works for you and you don't get breakouts or you mm -hmm. don't get clogged pores, go for it. Continue yeah. to use it. If it works for you, it works for you. Yeah. Um, but for anyone who's worried, I would just advise like, maybe don't try it if you are concerned. On your face, yeah. Because yeah, I have heard people use um, coconut oil to take their makeup off, so as a cleanser, and then also mm -hmm. as a night oil. Yeah. Um, and that can obviously have some effects on the skin that aren't that yeah. great. I do like to use coconut oil every now and again on my body, if, like in the summer, yeah. I feel like I need a bit of hydration. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes through the ends of my hair, it's like a for natural hair, oil. it's really yeah. good. Um, for body, I would say it's okay. I think just because your face, your face. is so, so much more sensitive, yeah. 
but for body and hair I would say that it's yeah. okay if you're not prone to anything. Okay. So this one is something that we've spoken about before. Is it better to keep natural beauty in the fridge? I've seen those little yes. uh, like beauty fridges mm -hmm. that you can have in your bathroom. Do you know I... what? I was even thinking, I was like, I, they're so cute. I want one yeah, of those. But then I was I like, got. don't And then I asked you, I was like, so shall I buy a fridge for my beauty I was like, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so the reason behind that is that all cosmetic products are, um, when they go through stability testing, so every single product is stability tested, yeah. and it's stored at different temperatures over the course of most commonly three months, sometimes longer, but three months is the standard for stability testing. So normally it's stored at four degrees, so in a fridge, 20 degrees, 25 degrees, which is room temperature, mm -hmm. um, and then you've got like 35 to 40 degrees, which is kind of like our, mm -hmm. our body temperature, um, and then you've got a higher, say, 46 to 50. Right. Um, so they're stored from like very cold to quite, to quite warm yeah. conditions. Um, so this is basically done so that say you're shipping a product to Dubai, you know that it will remain stable in a shipping container. Mm. Um, or if you're, I don't know, going skiing and it's in, in the bus whilst you're going to your oh, hotel, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it stays stable. Okay. Um, but most products, um, most products are completely stable at okay. room temperature. So maybe we're just getting a bit funny about our products in our homes yeah. because really, the temperature isn't going to be that different if it's just sat yeah. on your bathroom table. Because I exactly. was worried about um, if it was too close to a radiator or if it's too close to a window. Mm -hmm. And I know you, you do have to be conscious of the sun, right? Can the sun affect yeah. products? It, it can, but it's more going to affect it because of maybe the heat coming from the sun. Because obviously going through a window, it's like a greenhouse effect. So it could yeah. be really, really hot. Um, and the sun, the, the UV light can affect colour. Right. So if it's in um, opaque packaging, mm -hmm. then it's fine. Right. Um, but if it's in clear packaging, then I wouldn't put it next directly next to the window okay. necessarily. I wouldn't, also wouldn't put things directly next to the radiator, but if you do accidentally leave it there, then it's nothing to worry about at all. Okay, that's good to know. Are there any natural cleansers? I know you can use any oil as a moisturizer, but what about cleansing? Um, so there are natural cleansers out there. So um, like we said earlier, SLS. Mm, yeah, so your, So SLS is your normal soap based cleanser. So yeah. those are natural um, most of the time. Um, and then you can also have um, oil-based mm -hmm. cleansers mm -hmm. that are natural. So there are certain ingredients that you can add to your oil um, that act as an emulsifier. Mm -hmm. um, so basically you've got your oil and then you put it on your face, you dissolve all your makeup into it and then you add water and it turns milky. And then, yeah. and that's, that's so lovely. I love those kind of cleansers. I love those cleansers. Um, but then it goes a little bit milky, you continue to massage in, so then it kind of turns into a cream cleanser. Yeah, nice. Um, and then you apply more water and you just rinse it away and that can like thoroughly cleanse your skin. And, and they can be 100% natural? Yeah, completely. Amazing. Yeah, you, it's, it's not hard to find, it's just finding them. Yeah, so. Good. Jennifer has asked, what's the deal with palm oil in beauty products? Is it something to be avoided? Um, not necessarily. So with palm oil, there's been a lot of speculation recently. Mm. Um, it's quite controversial, isn't it? Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, but palm oil is a big part of of everything in the world. It's not just cosmetics. It's used in everything. It's used in food, um, yeah. lubricants um, mm -hmm. for cars and stuff like that. Yeah. There's so many I can't even think of them all. Um, but basically, with palm oil, um, you there are certifications to make sure that it is responsibly sourced. Right. So it's, yes, it, there is deforestation from palm oil, mm -hmm. but that's because it's so widely used. But the, the, other, the other thing is that um, palm oil, you get four times more yield from palm oil than any other source of oil. Oh, really? Um, yeah, so if we were to completely boycott palm oil and say move on to coconut oil or something else, you've got to plant four times the amount or get four times the amount of, wow. of um, source to get the same amount of oil. That means more water, mm -hmm. more workmen, more deforestation. Right. And you can get sustainably uh, Yes, sustainably sourced. sourced. Yeah. Yes, you can. Yeah. Um, and that also means that every 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 worker along the chain is supported as well. Right. So it's you're not taking advantage. Um, and us as a manufacturer, and it's it's spreading throughout the industry, um, mm -hmm. the whole entire industry, more manufacturers are looking for responsibly sourced palm mm -hmm. oil just because we're 
we don't want the yeah. we, like we we're, definitely we want our kind our, our world yeah. to survive so definitely so if you do find palm oil um as an ingredient on a product mm -hmm. maybe see if it is sustainably sourced yeah it's also um palm oil will also be so they use it to make other ingredients from so mm -hmm. um so sometimes there'll be just a little palm in the actual long word oh. so it won't just be palm oil on your on your product oh. um so yeah so it can be it can be hidden in lots of forms but it doesn't mean it's bad last question when a product is cruelty free how do they test the products they don't um <laughs> cruelty free products cruel animal testing um it's completely unnecessary um don't need to test on animals um and anyway for me as a chemist um i'll make a product and I'll put it on the back of my hand and I'll try it. I'll be like, does this feel nice? Is this doing what it's supposed to do? Yeah. And obviously, if it brings me out in a red rash, I'm not going <laughs> to send it to my customer. Yeah, yeah. Um, so animal testing is completely unnecessary. And in the EU and um, the UK, it's banned. So um, mm -hmm. so when a, when a cosmetic product says cruelty-free or not tested on animals, that's the same with every other cosmetic product sold in, really? yeah. sold in the UK. It's mainly China, right? Where they yeah. test on animals. Yeah, exactly. So if you sell your product in China, even if it's cruelty free in the UK, mm -hmm. it's not in China because there's yeah. just... You, I've heard of brands that have tried to sell in China but not have the animal tested, but mm -hmm. I think you almost need to sign a document yeah. that says that they will... Do yeah, what you they basically, want, basically sign something yeah. that says like do what you want with it. But yeah. we're not having anything to do with it, but they obviously know what's going to happen yeah, to it. See. The other thing that I've heard of some brands doing is that they'll make one product um and then they'll make another product that's slightly different and sell that to China. So your product in England is actually oh, not tested on animals, see, even yeah. though you'll see the same one yeah. elsewhere. So that they can get around that. So like the product is not tested on animals and is cruelty free, but right. the, the company uh, it's not because they're right. allowing it to so happen. there are loopholes basically yes. yeah. yeah oh okay sneaky yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right i think that's everything thank you so much i have learned so much from you <laughs> you've got so much knowledge about beauty in every aspect so thank you so much for Welcome. chatting to us today it's been fun thank Good. you for having me i'm glad you enjoyed it <laughs> thank you for watching at home as well <laughs> bye